The International Wolf Center in Ely takes visitors inside the lives of wolves. From pups in a den to packs on the move, designing and building this world-class exhibit required skilled workers, from artists and carpenters to engineers and managers. All that talent can be found under one roof at Split Rock Studios in Arden Hills. In 2018, when Split Rock was asked to update the Wolf Center's 15-year-old exhibits, designers first sat down with the center's founder, Dave Meech. As basically the leading wolf biologist in the world, he was really the one who was guiding us and advising us on the content that was going into the exhibits, but he was very invested. The developer and I sit, to, sit together and, and kind of come up with a uh, crazy board full of post-it notes and lines and all sorts of stuff. It kind of looks like a uh, murder mystery is being solved, but uh, we then come up with kind of the plan of, of what kind of lessons we want to teach, how to teach those, uh, what kind of style and furniture um, kind of fits their, their approach. We came to them with one design that was a little modern and, and a little more modern than they were comfortable with, and then really switched it up at Schematic Design 2 to be the, the design that you see now. We changed it up and went with more of a Northwoods um, feel, using some of that barn wood and recaptured barn wood look, as well as tweaking the colors. But what I really wanted to do with the design was make it a lot more timeless than it was before while still being playful and, and fun. We really wanted to humanize the wolf throughout the exhibit, not only pull people into the family life of the wolf and start to see the wolf as in the similarities that you see your family in, but also we wanted to give them a couple experiences that they got to feel like they were actually the biologists that were studying the wolves. So from the activity where you get to pet the wolf's fur and pretend to um, give it a, an injection, all the way to the um, flight simulator that we created for really putting people into the experience of not only researching wolves, but also um, kind of pretending to be a wolf in, in certain uh, situations. The aerial simulation was by far my favorite part because I did actually get to go up into the plane and connected cameras to all the windows and film us tracking the wolves. We created a plane with several different screens on all the windows so that you feel that you're immersed into that space um, and get to see what it, what it truly feels like to be flying and, and counting and tracking the wolves to, to learn their population numbers. Graphic designer Stephanie Schmidt used texture as well as color to help tell the story of wolves. Part of the exhibit was also focused on human interactions with wolves. It was the, hum the more human oriented became brickwork. Um, that was the background texture. And the more wolf oriented became trees. Split Rock was chosen because exhibit designer Chris Wilson had worked with Dave Meech in the 1980s on a science museum traveling exhibit. In 2000, Chris founded Split Rock Studios with Craig Somerville. A few years ago, they decided to retire and sell the company to their employees. So we personally all benefit from the company doing well, which is uh, bring, only brings good things. The studio's 55 employee owners work in a 50,000 square foot design and build space. We work with everybody from nature centers to museums, um, universities and libraries, all the way through zoos and aquariums. The range of our capabilities is pretty immense. In our art fab studio, we have everything from mural painting to hand sculpting to 3D molding, like you name it. <laughs> We're a custom shop, so we literally just come up with ideas and then figure out how to build them, and we have the capabilities to build pretty much anything. In our wood shop, we have master carpenters there building custom cabinetry, um, custom interactive components. Split Rock projects vary widely in size, topics, and location from the Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix to the Fagan Fighters World War II Museum in Granite Falls. They 
they were really interested in highlighting stories about POWs during World War II, as well as um, focusing on the Holocaust. And so they had arranged to purchase a train car from Germany that had been used to transport likely both um, Jews during the Holocaust and POWs. And they wanted Split Rock to both design and fabricate kind of a scene in which to put that, and then also interpret what that was. When we visited Split Rock, designers were finishing up an exhibit to be installed in Texas at Dallas's old municipal building. And that's where the police department was located in 1963 when JFK was shot. Oswald was arrested. He was taken to that building, held there for about two days, interrogated, and then killed in that building. There's a lot of intricate chronology about how the press played a role in how the events unfolded over the course of that weekend, and some really bizarre pieces about the architecture of the building and how that kind of put Oswald in the same places as the press and created this really big media frenzy. We have a couple different installations in the exhibit that are really focusing on what that media looked like, what the process was like, the birth of the 24-hour news cycle happens at this point. All of these reporters, hundreds of reporters from around the globe, crammed into Old City Hall in Dallas. Um, and it is, when you see the footage, it is just completely chaotic. The first stage of every project is figuring out the message and the best way to deliver it to the public. It might be with a touch screen, it might be with video, it might be push buttons and LED lights lighting up. If you want a visitor to understand what cow digestion looks like, you might want to start with a see-through cow. You want to see how food moves from one stomach to the next. So we had a cow fabricated and projected with a short throw projector animation onto the side of the cow's stomach so that you could see how things move from one stomach to the next while you had audio explaining the process. Someone comes to us with something that's just way out of left field. Um, for example, I was asked by the American Swedish Institute, can we get a 20 foot tall dollar horse? And, you know, for their budget, it wasn't necessarily realistic to build a dollar horse out of wood. But we used our partner, who is an inflatables company, to create an inflatable 20-foot dollar horse. And so even if we can't build it here, we have uh, contacts and connections to make it happen. Once a project is finished being built, our builders will actually painstakingly package it in a way that it can be safely transported. And then we will rent as many semis as we need to get it to the project site in one go. We, when we did a project in Kuwait, we even had to hire a refrigerated shipping systems to make sure that the exhibits weren't affected by too many changes in climate as they made their journey out to Kuwait. Every day is something new and creative and requires a lot of problem solving to make sure that it can actually be installed successfully and work well for 10, 15, 20 years in the future. The most rewarding aspect always of any project is seeing it all come together and seeing visitors in the space, seeing them enjoy the things that we've come up with and just having the, the reassurance that our ideas are actually things that people find compelling and interesting. It's always so much fun when something that you've started creating that's just first in your head, then on a computer screen, suddenly it shows up and it's a real thing. Every project is unusual in its own way and it's, it's always fun to discover what that is.